Why, it's hotter in here than it is outside. Oh, no. Of all days for the air conditioner to break down, we better call the repairman. Oh, his number's in the kitchen. So is the ice cream. We can have some while we're waiting. Will be if my wife catches me and she come to dinner tomorrow. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, I don't think we've met. I'm Martha McDowell from next door. Hi, Martha. I see you've met my son Alfonso and my grandson Bobby. They're here from New York on a fishing trip. Thus far, all they've caught is a cold. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> nice, don't mind it, but it is none of my business. Besides, she's only known him a short time. I'm sure she'll come to her senses before very long. Oh, Ma, you don't have to help with the dishes. I had to come in here. I couldn't listen to that anymore. You mean Jeremy's rude remarks. I mean, Rebecca talking about marrying that jerk. Piece of cake, Uncle Angela. No, thank you. Huh? I'll take a slice, darling. No problem, sweetheart. Hurry back, dumpling. My feet have wings, barf bag. <laughs> Dorothy, please hang in there a little while longer and I'd wait until all my friends are dead, too. <laughs> the last thing I need is whispering at my funeral. <laughs> I can't believe you're reacting like this. We got so close this past week, I thought I could tell you anything. Anything but this. <laughs> well, Mama, I'm on it to be a terrible scandal. And then one day I had to make a decision. Benjamin invited me to our senior prom. I didn't know what to do. Should I go out with this boy I really cared for? Or should I bow to the pressures of an unjust society? People with money is how we got things done in New York. In Sicily, a powerful horse's head and put it in somebody's bed. So do you making that uh, like hell? Our garbage commissioner, Fredo Lombardi, went on strike once. He woke up the next morning sharing a pillow with National Velvet. <laughs> well, who the pity I do declare, honey, where are you rushing off to? The sky is falling. I'm off to warn the king. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I don't need something to hit me in the head in order to get the message. <gasps> Actually, in this case, it did hit me in the head. <laughs> Yeah, a piece of when your brother Phil won't fight to see who gets them. So that's what it feels like to be an heiress. You're not cutting up the obituaries, are you? I want to make sure my canasta game is still on for tomorrow. I'm looking for a job. They cut off Charlie. And people kept looking right past that great man until today. Blanche, as crazy as it sounds, I've got a real chance now to win that election. Because you lied. But is that such a high price to pay? Oh, Gil, I don't know much about politics, but I do know a thing or two about men. And I know what kind of man you are. You're an... Every time you say ow, just because I once asked you to move a sofa. I guess I have no choice. I'm in agony. Did you hear that? Agony, Dorothy. <laughs> Sophia, don't worry. You made the right decision. I was going to give you this when you got to the hospital, but I'm too excited. Here's your St. Olaf fun pack. That's right. I'm nuts about that guy. You'd have to be. But you know, it's so strange. You have no idea what it's like dating a superhero. Sure I can. Why, my Stan and Superman had a lot in common. They were both faster than a speeding bird. Hi, Gary. Come on in. <laughs> I just wanted to drop off Blanche's earrings. They must have fallen off in my car the oh, other night. I'll get Blanche for you. She's in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, no, uh, don't do that. Uh, actually, there's something I want to talk to you about. What is it, Gary? Rose, I find you very attractive. <laughs> I'm almost sure that I don't have to ask this, but you are aware the toilet water comes in a bottle. 
here. Oh, cat food. Oh, Rose, have you been feeding those strays again? I can't help it, Dorothy. I heard them howling and moaning all night. How do you ignore something like that? Yeah, I'm getting used to it. Don't attractive? Yes. Born out? Yes. Useless? <laughs> What's your point, Swim? My point is, well, I was just hoping that maybe you're tired of people like Floyd who don't appreciate you. And maybe you're right. Uh, he is not a new stand. He's a new stand. Then you can see the change. I'm waiting for the change. That was a five I handed you. <laughs> Look, Stan, old Stan, new Stan, tastes great, less filling, Stan. <laughs> the point is, I have some sympathy. Hey, who met this De Kimmel character? You try having sympathy for a guy like that. De Kimmel? You mean Jasper De Kimmel? That's right, you got it. Pablo personality. <laughs> old girls, listen to me. When a famous artist like Jasper De Kimmel dies, the value of his work doubles sometimes. But I just sit here a little while long and look at the Christmas tree. Oh, it sure is beautiful, isn't it? I think I'll stay and keep you company. I think that's a good idea. This has been such a pleasant evening, I hate to see it end. Oh, me too. <laughs> the f end. <laughs> Oh, my God, Dorothy, there it is. The statue. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, I just can't wait to hear that. <laughs> no, you moron. She has a date. Oh. <laughs> is that true, Dorothy? Do you have a date tonight? <laughs> Rose, I mean, that's an awfully personal question. To yes! Get real, Grandma. <laughs> Either way, I'll get the bike. My folks will feel terrible because two mean old ladies forced me to return my toy. And because it was ruined in the accident on the way back to their house. Accident? See this water pistol? It's loaded with red ink. <laughs> Ma, where were you? We've been worried. You know who's in this hospital? Rochelle DeVito. She slipped in the shower. Hi, Rose. No, I'm Dorothy. Hi, Rose. Uh, I'm Blanche. You must be Isaac Newton. Yes, I am. I bet you take a lot of kidding about that. <laughs> <laughs> about what? <laughs> uh, Rose should be ready any moment. Happy. You're the one that's not happy, Mama. You're doing it again. You'll tell me how to live my life. What do you mean? Nothing's ever enough for you. It wasn't enough that I was pretty. I had to be the prettiest. Or that I was popular. I had to be the most popular. Or that I was bright. I had to be the brightest. Well, that didn't mean you had to run out and become the fattest. <laughs> Something blue? Uh, here. Oh, this is blue. Oh, thank these you. earrings are old. They were my grandmother's. Thank you. Here, I borrowed these knee-high surgical stockings on the foot. <laughs> Ma. Here, Lorraine. Oh, thank you. That's everything but the new. The shoes I carved out of cheese. <laughs> My mother spread them on the tiny windmill you built out of Triscuits. <laughs> Mom, this is the best breakfast I've had in ages. Me too, Dorothy. When we're alone, she feeds me lumpy oats. some lemon chicken and smoked ham. It's all prepared. Oh, let's just start with appetizers. That's fine. Yeah, how about smoked dogs? Oh, good. Oh, you'll never guess what I found. Jimmy Hoffa. Pepperoni. Uh-oh. Don't tell Mom. Blanche, this is Elaine. Well, hello, Elaine. Hello. I was just leaving. Oh, John, you and Elaine have a good time tonight. Oh, and just so you'll know, it looks like Elaine here is an even bigger music lover than I am.
pretend. We were having lunch at Fairview Gardens. Well, Floyd McCallum walked in with another woman. So I pretended Sven was my boyfriend just to make Floyd jealous. Did you explain any of this to Sven? I assumed he knew. Blanche, how could you assume anything? The man offered to kill dinner for us last night. <laughs> How'd you run? Suddenly you were out of sight. It was very painful for me. For me too. I ran face first into the crossing signal. <laughs> Rose, have dinner with me tonight. You know, Miles can have you for the rest of his life, but... <laughs> it's okay, I didn't want my salad anyway. <coughs> I'm sorry. Sucre? Oh, no, thank you. I'm still sucking out of Smith Brothers. <laughs> well, good evening. Friday night, we're planning on having dinner at Joe's Stone Crab. Oh? Hey, it's your wedding anniversary. Oh, yeah, right. Sounds nice. Ma, you didn't forget, did you? Oh, forgive me. I forgot something. Maybe you should ship me back to Shady Pines. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be in the living room being... I think you dated anyone before Charlie. Actually, it was while I dated Charlie. <laughs> Rose Nylon, you were in a love triangle and never told us. Well, I didn't think you'd be interested. Oh, but you were certain that we would be interested in the story about little Yemeni, the boy who was raised by a wild moose? <laughs> For St. Olaf? That's right. How much is it? You want the express or the yokel? Don't you mean local? No, ma'am, I mean yokel. On the yokel, a family of first cousins plays banjo music as the passengers get on and off. <laughs> Do they take requests? No. Give me the express. <laughs> you got about an hour to kill. And... <laughs> You don't have to build him up to me, honey. I like him fine already. <laughs> it's five o'clock. Where's Holly? Out with Dorothy, I think. Still? Oh, I'm going to owe Dorothy big for this one. You know something, Rose? I don't think you're big. <laughs> Congratulations. Way to go. Maybe we should sign Mary up for some natural childbirth classes. You know, that's not a bad idea. I wish I'd known about them when I was pregnant. I didn't know what to do except scream at Stan, never to touch me again, and call him every name in the book. I realize the significance of football in the South. I've had men break dates with me to go to football games. Oh, come on, nobody's going to kill me over a high school football game. They kill this fish. Dorothy, please, I'm scared. All right, all right, Ma. Nothing to be scared about. Oh, see me drive home. Come on, baby. One, two. Married, but after his wife died, there was no stopping him. <laughs> so? Well... We could finally consummate our long and burning passion. And... It took about ten minutes. He wore his watch. Mm. You can't pick men and you can't pick pizza! Thank you, Blanche. You know, I can't believe how nice you're being to me even though I'm suing your friend. Well, I've always been attracted to ever so slightly younger men. <laughs> Besides, just look at you. Oh, must be so frustrating for an athlete like you. <laughs> Did you ever play any college ball? Barry Glick is very important to you. Uh, Barry was the man that I wanted to be the first. First where? <laughs> On Mars, Rose. My first lover. Well, so what happened? Stanley, that's what happened. Stanley. Oh, I can't believe it. It was only yesterday you were selling us cookies. Now she's given them away. <laughs> Mary, honey, have you told your father? Well, I tried, but since Mom died, I don't know. We're just on different wavelengths. 
Well, honey, what about the baby's father? I mean, after all, it's his responsibility, too. You were a child. Hey, we had comic books in Sicily. My favorite was Benito the Hood. He lived in the forest with his band of merry thugs. <laughs> Benito was very popular. You mean because he stole from the rich and gave to the poor? I said Benito the Hood, not Benito the Idiot. <laughs> He stole from everyone and kept it for himself. Jason says I can bring a friend to the barbecue. Come on, Rose, they're firemen. After a couple of drinks, they start to do CPR. <laughs> oh, I envy you, Blanche. You really have it together. Not me. I have too many hang-ups. Good night. Good night. Pretend you didn't hear that. I'll see you in the morning. That's Blanche. Oh, didn't I say that? This is my date, Norman. He's a student in my creative writing course. I didn't know you taught high school. <laughs> Norman and I are the same age, spiritually. Hey, listen, if you can get him to buy... Yeah. How would you like to star in my video? Are there any new love scenes involved? <laughs> no. Because if it's integral to the plot, I'll be more than happy to do it. Dorothy, Sophia wants to be in my video. Why won't you? Dorothy's always been a little camera shy. You'd be too if you look like Fess Parker in here. <laughs> oh. oh. Being a gentleman, I realize this time it's only Stan, but next time it could be somebody appealing or charming or at least reasonably good looking. No offense, Stan. Come on, take him. Dorothy, could we talk for a minute? Of course, for a minute. Come on. You bring your wife with you, or did you make her stay home and clean out her toy box? <laughs> oh, and that's Blanche. How do you do? And that's Sophia. That's uh, Kate's grandma. You got your stethoscope, I wouldn't mind a freebie. <laughs> Grandma, Dennis doesn't have a stethoscope. Of course not, he's on vacation. Oh, that's not what I mean. Dennis is a podiatrist. Well, that about concludes the first meeting of the Hunka Hunka Burning Love Fan Club. But before we adjourn, our secretary has a real special surprise. A genuine Elvis artifact. Oh, oh, oh. Feet on the ground. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Blanche. You handled it better than I thought you would. Oh, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not thrilled, but as long as they're in love and happy and I don't have to call her mommy, I can live with it. <laughs> oh, hello there. How'd you do? We came in second. Oh, that's terrific. What'd you get? Treated badly. <laughs> I am talking about your date, Rose. Who is this secret man you're seeing? Oh, it's not a secret. His name's Ray. He's a friend of Miles. <gasps> you are dating a friend of Miles? You scallywag! You skunkweed! <laughs> What's that mean? I don't know. What is yours? <laughs> about your mother? Ma! Oh, my God, I'm a dog. I think he ate your mother. Ma! Some attack dog. He hit under the table, peed on the floor, and ran out the back. <laughs> Why? I just felt it was the right thing to do. <laughs> my wedding was outdoors. February 12th, I'll never forget it. <sighs> I wore the most beautiful white flannel wedding gown. <laughs> Feet in. Every time we had a fight, toward the end our place looked like Easter in Rotterdam. It's good to see that you're not bitter. Everybody, I'd like you to meet my future son-in-law. This is Dennis, the gorgeous doctor. Dennis, I'd like you to meet my best friends. This is Rose. Hey, hello, Rose. <laughs> Come here. Oh, it's you. Look, Blanche, we have to talk. 
I don't believe I have anything to say to you, Dorothy. Then let me do the talking. Elliot was just here, and he... But it'll never happen again. I really can't believe this, Ma. You, of all people, should know the value of this ring. Dorothy, please, I was just trying to buy time. I can't give up the ring until I know the Pope is going to bless Agnes. It doesn't matter what your reasons are. Ma, th this ring is important. It was wrong to take it, and I'm going to see that it gets back first thing to... The thing about Guido Spirelli, I think maybe she went there to try to find him. You're kidding? I know him like a book. I know his tastes. I know his tendencies. I know he hates humidity. And if I don't miss my guess, I could pinpoint his location exactly. Oh, thank God. He's someplace air-conditioned. <laughs> I also don't know how much more I can take of Sophia treating me this way. Hi, everybody. I'm back. Hi, Ma. Did you have a nice walk? Yeah. Ma, where'd you get the skateboard? Oh, yeah. I guess there's some kid at the park with an umbrella. What? I think they're making... What? They're making a stove. Let me see. Let me see. Yep, they are. We're back in business. Oh, please. No, they are, Dorothy. They really are. I don't know a thing about animals. Oh, but sir. But you, you, you've kept me on hold all this time to tell me that it is sold out? No, no, I will not have a nice day. <laughs> oh, darn, I was really counting on that concert. Now what do we do? Don't worry. I'll make some calls. I got connections. Ma, Ma, I'll handle it. Just a little something. Stop it. You know what I want to hear. No, I don't. <laughs> you played it for her, you can play it for me. But I don't think that I should... If she can stand it, so can I. Now play. Okay. You're the boss. It's a world of laughter. <laughs> that should take care of it. We're all out of fresh pepper. Do you have any more? Oh, yeah, in the pantry, in the back. Oh, boy, this chicken looks great. Girls, girls, Count Bessie is missing. <laughs> I went out to the garage to feed her and her... That's it. Look, it would be wrong for me to keep quiet and just let you go off with this guy when I know you're going to be hurt. Look, Dorothy, you've had your say, but I do not agree with you, so please just stay out of it. If you're trying to help me, you're just kidding yourself. Darn it, I forgot my lucky silver dollar. What do you need that for? To get lucky. How do you remember all this? I tagged them for migratory purposes. <laughs> Dorothy, come on, the auction needs you. The children need you. Please, won't you reconsider? Oh, all right. It's only one night. I'll go, but I'll tell you, I really hate this. Oh, come on, Dorothy. That balloon man couldn't have been that terrible. I feel like I need a spatula to keep them off me. <laughs> Good thing I don't have one. Oh, shut up. But Blanche, whatever is the matter? You know very well what the matter is, Dorothy. This stupid moon has all the men acting crazy. Nobody wants me. It's freaky. <laughs> There's been a mistake. We're here to see Sophia Petrillo. Oh, won't you come in? Are you Marvin from the ad? Yes, he is. And are you Sophia? Well, he doesn't look like he'll... Maybe she's a little lax in the house, Will. She is more than a little lax. She's habitually late. She's broken quite a number of glasses. And she threw out People magazine before I had a chance to read it. But, Dorothy, look at all the wonderful things that have happened since Marguerite started working here. They worked out after all. Were you three listening to our conversation? Absolutely not. You know we would never eavesdrop. They made me do it. <laughs> When I turn my hearing aid up to ten, I can hear a canary break wind in Lauderdale. Al? Al? Damn. <laughs> Let's 
scoops in an obscene way. <laughs> prove it because by the time I would take it home to show my father the <laughs> backers of Howard the Duck going somewhere for Christmas well yes I am I'm going home to see my family oh gee I wish I was going somewhere for Christmas but my family disowned me they're embarrassed because I'm an artist. She'll be thrilled to see you, too. Yeah, she's standing right here. Hold on. Dorothy, you were magnificent. Oh, you certainly were. How did you do it? I just kept telling myself that once he was here, he'd be close enough to kill. <laughs> the old jacket, we put the winning lottery ticket in the pocket. Start the engine and open the door. I'll jump in at the bottom of the driveway! From now on, I'm gonna be a more supportive mother. You look nice tonight. You look better than a lot of other women here. Like, uh, like her, for instance. Oh, thanks, Ma. By the way, that's a man. Hey, that's not my fault. Girls, look, a mime. Some people found it obnoxious. For me, it was a turn-on. <laughs> Miles is cooking dinner to celebrate Frost's birthday. He invited us all and we accepted. I don't remember ever agreeing to that. Sure you did. I distinctly remember. You said, oh boy, Miles reading poetry. Sign me up, sign me up. You sounded pretty definite. Stunned. <laughs> Stunned is the only way to describe how... Stunned, I am. Just a minute, just a minute, Blanche. Are you trying to tell us that you are stunned? <laughs> Don't you make fun of me, Dorothy Spornak. I just saw the sign-up sheet down at the bowling alley. Rose, do Is he okay? Oh, yes, he's having cosmetic surgery. It's about time. <laughs> I'll be in the john. Reading material. <laughs> Not worrying about the end of the world. Hey, what's with the long faces? Oh, we were just talking about the bomb. Very nice. You haven't even seen my new act. <laughs> no, we were not talking about you. Everybody's going to be talking about me when they see what I cooked up for the talent show. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Sophia! Sophia! You're welcome. Rose. Rose. <laughs> Any wonder we get nursing home brochures by the truckload? <laughs> You're not being in help at all? Nobody's been in help at all. I don't know what in God's name I'm gonna do. Take it easy. If I know my sister, she's playing a trick, looking for a little laugh. Now relax. I bet Sophia is here before dinner. Hey. Mr. Occupado, what? Broke her hip, fell through the shower doors, hit her head against the sink, got a concussion, and swallowed her dentures. <laughs> to hear her complaining, you think no one else had problems. <laughs> I took some of her cookies. You hungry? No. I'm too upset to eat. Honey, they're doing everything they can. Oh, I still. Don't tell me you've never heard of Mr. Terrific. Mr. Terrific's Clubhouse? Every weekday afternoon, one full hour on Saturdays? You don't mean that clown with the kitty show. No, he's not a clown. He's a superhero. You're thinking of Bozo. <laughs> I'm talking to Bozo. Save my sister to sing for free in his piano bar. You mean your sister Virginia? No, I mean my sister, Miss Susan Anton. <laughs> Blanche, how could you tell such a lie? He didn't believe me for a minute. He told me I was much too attractive to be related to her. <laughs> but he gave us the room anyhow because he said he liked my moxie. Well, then burial, I guess. But will you promise to put a blanket in with me? Why? Oh, I just feel more comfortable and cozier. And I'd want my pictures of Charlie and the animals. Uh, you know, the ones in the little silver frames. And, and my pictures of the children. And 
crucified. Girls, you are my very best friends in the entire world, and I trust and respect you more than any people I know. So I want you to tell me the truth. Now, honestly, do you think I'm competent at what I do? Based on the sounds from your bedroom, I'd bet you're damn near spectacular. <laughs> We wanted for the, uh, for the other parts. I think the Bea Arthur part was described in the script as a Bea Arthur type um, <laughs> <laughs> the pilot script. So uh, we were very concerned. And Tony called from New York um, and said, "I found her um, watching while two naked men wrestle to see who gets to make love to me." <laughs> It's the end of the world. Only for the loser. <laughs> okay, Rose, what is this all about? You know that Sunshine Cadet Troop I've been helping out with? This was done by one of the girls. She calls it... I don't feel that bad. Shut up, Rose. <laughs> Look, I never said I was going. Well, since when do we have to say we're going? We've gone for the past five years. Sure, we may hate it, but we always go. You never told me you hated it. That's because I'm a good friend. And a good friend would never say anything like that. I appreciate that, Blanche. Look, why don't you just... Stakes. So I take it he still has the wrong idea about oh, you two. come on, Ma, it's nothing. Dorothy, the man since you meet. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I really do want Stan as a friend, but just as a friend. So what was that lip lock you had on him the other night? Down to the market for some cookies and bean dip. Oh, hell, I'll just take the damn thing off in the car. Oh, Blanche, I'm glad you're here. I have something to tell you. What is that you're holding? Oh, I bought a new gown. Oh, an extra piece of the puzzle. <laughs> Anyone should be excited. Imagine these hands that once reached inside a chicken for a breech birth. <laughs> they soon grace the pages of a penny saver. You've come along. He settled down and found a job. He thinks he should be traveling over the country trying to find himself. Maybe what Michael needs is a little exposure. Exposure to what? To plutonium, Rose. <laughs> to somebody more career-oriented, somebody like Bridget. Maybe if the two of them spent... <laughs> My gosh, you're right. Huh? That is the best thing I have ever tasted. <laughs> oh, this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me a break. You can't smell that from the hall. No, she'll be back in the morning. She's trying to teach me a lesson. I know my mother. Oh, really? You're the one who said she wasn't going to leave in the first place. You know, Dorothy, it's not just your mother who left. I feel like she's my mother, too. I know, honey, but don't worry. She'll be back. Now that she's gone, who am I going to go to in the middle of the night with my deep audit people? It doesn't mean there's a problem. There's a problem. Oh, that's too bad. Pass the meatballs. <laughs> Dorothy, I take total blame for this. I know it's a bummer, but no matter what comes down, we're in this together, babe. Of course, I won't know until we actually reconstruct our finances, but the way I figure it, we probably have to pay a small fee. Well, it doesn't sound so bad. Unless we can... Haven't we learned anything from the tragic examples of Mike Douglas and Ferdinand Marcos? <laughs> Come on, Sophia. You know, a little lunch might cheer you up. You brought yours? Nah, this is a nectarine filet. I'm having the usual as soon as the sausage guy comes. So let's... <laughs> My God, I've left brain cells all over the eastern seaboard. <laughs> where's Ma? Who? Ma, where's Ma? In the cemetery in St. Ola. <laughs> Why do you want to know? Because I thought we'd all go out and... Looking forward to dance class today. I can see that. You're wearing your heat seeking stretch paint. I am to here with you. Your body is like a heat sponge. You'll suck up all the heat, and I'll get up in the morning a frozen fish stick. No, don't be ridiculous. Just turn up the heat. It's already on nine. On ten, you can cook a lean cuisine. Good night, Ma. Girls, girls, 
Girls, can I please share your electric blanket? Did I say something embarrassing? No. No, Rose, you're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, I've got to tell her tonight that it's not going to be easy. I mean, I still haven't told Blanche. Don't take anything. <laughs> I'm meeting my family, so I can only give you a little while. Oh, we appreciate it very much. You see, my mother is having a memory problem. We were hoping, you know, that if we looked around the apartment, it There's no need free. to explain. That's okay, I'll just let it ring. Okay. I tell you, we're here because we have a very dear friend who is a patient here, and we have some concerns. She's a lovely old woman, very sweet and very kind, and we would really hope that in some way, you know, you could... I, damn it, will you answer the phone? For nine months. <laughs> really, Ma, I'd be more comfortable at a hotel. Fine. Be more comfortable. I hardly see you. You never come to visit. And you finally get here, you're staying at a hotel. You could have just called. Ma, do you want me to stay at the house? Do what you want. The guy from the ad will be here any second. How do I look? Ma, you forgot to zip up your dress. I didn't forget. He's probably got arthritis. Why make it any harder? That's him. I there you are. Ma, I scheduled the appointment for your checkup. <laughs> Ma, you know you have to have a physical. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Take you to court? Have you declared incompetent? I'm not incompetent. Once, when I laughed too hard, I had a little ax to you. Dorothy, you know that blue washcloth in my bathroom? Yeah. That's how big Caesar's loincloth was. Good night. <laughs> Ma. Ma. All right. What did you and Kate have a fight about? About advertising condoms on television. About Dennis. <laughs> Where have you been? You know what time it is? Nine o'clock. In your dreams. You take the wrong bus again? Never mind, you didn't miss anything. What do you think you're doing? I think I'm crocheting, but to tell you the God's honest truth, I wouldn't swear to it. Rose. Huh? I... <laughs> Rose, I'd uh, like to have a few words with you alone. I'm sure Buzz won't mind. I'll wait out on the lanai. Pumpkin. <laughs> so? I won't make it. They always prey on the weak and innocent. The others will taunt me for trying to excel at my work in the laundry. <laughs> I'll fall in with a bad crowd whose leader looks like Ethel Merman. <laughs> and I'll be forced to engineer a daring prison break using my laundry cart. From that time on... I'm not proud of this, but... There's something I have to show you. Oh, please, I've done a lot worse. I've done panties over pants. Bras over blouses. One East, I... I am miserable. It is mind over matter, Dorothy. Now you can do it. You can get up off that couch. You feel better already. You're not sick anymore, Dorothy. You can heal yourself. Walk, Dorothy, walk. <laughs> hey, just because you put your... It's your eyesight. Then people are telling you to turn down the TV set when you can barely hear it. And you could live with that. But this... They're trying to take something from me that I just won't give. I can't let this happen, Dorothy. I can't lose my Sal. Not again. Understanding. Who is buying? Uh, well, how about Dutch tea? Great. I'll see you Thursday. Dorothy. Thanks. Uh. <laughs> Learn. Picture this. Brooklyn, July, 1949. Ma, can't you put a sentence together? You sound like a sportscaster. Ah, <laughs> oh, shut up. Anyway, it was the night of your first anniversary. 
You showed up at my house at 2 o'clock in the morning crying and carrying on. You looked like hell. Yes. <laughs> so, I tear up my priest application, ask Philomena to marry me, and we live the next 72 years in a wedded bliss. Well, why did you keep it a secret all these years? I was afraid that my family is going to turn on me. They find out that I broke a promise to... <laughs> Wait a minute. How did this happen? We all voted for you. <laughs> but that is your own damn fault. Why did you have to vote for yourself? I just assumed that everyone was going to vote for Rose, and I, I didn't want to sweep to hurt her feelings. <laughs> I guess that would hurt. It does! <laughs> So what? You did the same thing at McSorley's Bar Super Bowl weekend. How do I look? Ooh. Oh, terrific! I'll say! To the untrained eye, that polyester could almost pass for silk. <laughs> it is silk. Oh, sure, Rose, and sure. Men are built that way. No, it's a fact. I saw Dr. Art Uline explain it on the Today Show with a plastic model. <laughs> Please, Ma, you slept like a baby. I know, because I spent the whole night awake in that chair. Well, it couldn't be any worse than trying to sleep on a hard wooden bench. Oh, Ma, I'm making dinner. What would you like to eat? A nice thick T-bone steak, corn on the cob, and pecan pie for dessert. <laughs> now ask me what I can chew. <laughs> I'll start soaking the cornflakes now. Girls, you will never guess who was just... Are you all right? I feel better than I have felt in a long time. Oh. To my friends, who made being sick a little easier because they cared. Oh. oh. <laughs> On her way, Henny came upon Goosey Lucy. <laughs> One of the most popular birds in the barnyard. The most popular. <laughs> And the eighth graders are seeing a play today about how to be that popular safely. I don't want your money, Stan. Marvin, give me the agreement. Ouch! Weddings. Why do I always get hit at these things? Get out, Stan. Get out before I need a lawyer. I think you got a case. I'm going to see a game. Mama offered to drive us over to Vero Beach to see the Dodgers play. Jeremy's a big baseball fan. Becky's a bigger one. Becky's a bigger everything. <laughs> Not everything, Jeremy. <laughs> I mean, I hardly know him. <laughs> I suppose, but it feels like I've known him for ages. And that he's known me. Oh, I found the most wonderful man in the world, and I owe it all to the two of you. I was saying it all off. And she was like, you know, in a real sweet syrupy, you know, hello, dear, it's Betty. Um, could I have a name for the mayor of St. Olaf? And I went, uh, Hand and Till. <laughs> Hand and Till. <laughs> mayor Hand. Well, she didn't like it either. <laughs> it feels better being honest with you, too. And I'd hate to think that this is going to keep us from being friends. Well, honey, of course it isn't. Oh, no, I'll get used to this. I will. Well, look at me already. I'm practically comfortable seeing you here. Married life. I, I was so careful about money. And all the time, Stanley had his hand in the cookie jar. In the olden days, the Vikings had cut off your hand if they caught you stealing. They cut out your tongue if they caught you lying. They cut off your feet if they caught you trespassing. Too bad there wasn't a Viking around when Stanley knocked you up. <laughs> Stanley. Girls, I've made a decision. What is it, Blanche? It's just too many precious memories in this house. I'm not about to trade them in for a few lousy dollars. Chuck Moore, he stumbled his offer. Tell him we'll be out by the first of the month. <laughs> My date will be here soon. I'd better get ready. Oh, Ma, will you knock it off? Oh, you're right. At 82, what am I going to get ready? I always have my purse, and I shouldn't pee until he's got the motor running. 
At any age, you ought to be ready for your date, Sophia. Blanche, she doesn't have a date. No, I was thinking more about that time. Rose, she okay? She's having open heart surgery. Oh, no. We have to go to the bathroom. Oh, come on, Dawn, I'll take you. And bring back some of those paper seat covers. <laughs> hey, you collect stamps. <laughs> Give up. People care. They really do. Good people won't let this kind of suffering go on. You just gotta hang in there till tomorrow. Sophia, it is tomorrow. Okay, what do you think of this one? Dorothy, you and Elliot have been out almost every night this week. He's obviously hooked. You don't have to look good anymore. What you have on is fine. It's in the top cabin. I'm talking about the Cheswick dude. I finally sat the old man down and explained that at 90 there would never, never be anything between us. Mm. What did he say? He said, not never, but with a little luck every six or seven weeks. <laughs> oh, I'm glad everybody's still up. I just had a to... That's okay. I'll just let it ring. Okay. I tell you, we're here because we have a very dear friend who is a patient here, and we have some concerns. She's a lovely old woman, very sweet and very kind. And we would really hope that in some way, you know, you could... I, damn it, will you answer the phone? Keep up when you're in an upright position. <laughs> Dorothy, would you care to give an example of how Blanche is selfish? All right, fine. Let's say uh, about a month ago, I was not feeling very well. As a matter of fact, I was sick as a dog. We were... The rest of my life. <laughs> It's very oily. <laughs> what about dinner tomorrow night, Dorothy? Say about eight? Perfect. We'll go to Jack's Crab House. It's wonderful. Well, girls, is this dress going to stop traffic or what? Oh. Hello there. You are kidding, Rose. No. That's how my mother taught me. <laughs> Honey, didn't that give you a false impression about what a man would look like? It sure did. <laughs> Can you imagine my surprise on my wedding night oh. with Charlie? Oh. It was Easter. And, you know, Dorothy, I apologize to my wife, and in the spirit of Christmas, she's letting me come back home. Great. In that case, you can give me back the $60 I gave you. Well, when I apologized, I said it with flowers. $60 worth? Dorothy, I may be a lot of things, but I'm not cheap. Couldn't live with any of those. Look, I am perfectly capable of attracting a man who is charming, good-looking, and interested in personal hygiene. Are you going to take this seriously or not? Blanche, are you all right? I'm stunned. I'm just stunned. Honey, what's wrong? Really, Mr. <laughs> Dorothy, if I were you, I'd put the cake down. You see, Mr. Music's brother is Mr. Lawyer. Besides, that's not a very adult thing to do. You're right. I can't do it. <laughs> Mr. Ha Ha? Yes, Bobby? <laughs> See, there is something I can say, and I want to apologize for this story before I begin. Have you ever heard of a little town called St. Olaf? <laughs> no. Perfect. Now, as it was told to me, and I have to admit that I wasn't listening that closely, uh, there was this farmer named Niels Niebuhr. Prep you for surgery in about an hour, until then, just relax. There aren't enough drugs in the entire building. I <laughs> hope my exercising doesn't bother you. No, not at all. What is it, some kind of therapy you have to do? No, I just like to stay healthy. I have to break this to you, Bonnie. You're in a hospital. The exercises aren't working. <laughs> He was tall, she was short. He was cheap, she was extravagant. <laughs> he was opposites, we get the picture. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll never forget the time they sang at our annual talent show, right after the herring juggling act. <laughs> Why don't you check the fruit salad? No way. <laughs> I'm 
I'm not going anywhere near that refrigerator. Wow, two miracles in one day. I'm, I'm sorry, Alvin, don't cry. That's okay. You cry all you want. Another rejection. And this one isn't even personal. It's a form letter. They just filled in my name at the top. You might be dying. You were the one who was sensitive and vulnerable. Blanche is right. At the counseling center, I see cases like this all the time. When people lose loved ones, they sometimes do things they'd never normally do. Take Mrs. Pulaski. When her mother died, she divorced her husband, lost 30 pounds, died. 1934, I was thinking, boy, am I blessed to have such a precious two-year-old in my life. <laughs> oh, look, here's one of us on a, on a bicycle built for two. I'll never forget <laughs> that spring day in 1940. I was thinking, Ma, you're making this up. <laughs> of course I am. How the hell should I remember? <laughs> Maybe it sounds strange, but without Charlie, I, I thought that part of my life was over. I never gave it a second thought. Until now? <laughs> then I think you should go on the cruise. Honey, if the situation is right, you'll know it. But I'm not sure I'm... ...is that you're no longer able to bear children. Oh, it means much more than that. I just don't know how it happened, you know. Only yesterday I was Magnolia Queen. <laughs> I remember my Aunt Lynette going crazy about that time and my mother saying to me in a hushed voice, Oh, she's going through the... <laughs> well, I, I was so stunned, I just started wandering aimlessly through this train station when I heard a familiar voice calling, Rose! Rose, is that really you? <laughs> it was my Uncle Johansson. He died when I was nine years old. Well, Dorothy, I was lying in bed eating. And if I don't get up and walk around, I'm going to become as big as a hippo. And life, if I can still call it that, has to go on in one form or the other. So here I am. I'll just spend my remaining years in the company of women. <laughs> Only reason I'm sticking around is to read Danielle Steele's next book. <laughs> this is all because you're going through the... Ah, uh, it was real... <laughs> Dorothy, it's Stan. Didn't you recognize me? Of course I recognize you. That's why I slammed the door in your face. <laughs> Still the job. It's been a real pleasure. Good night. Lucy, you're grounded for the rest of your stay here. Uh, uh, Blanche, wait! You're embarrassing me. Now, why don't you go get a good night's sleep, and we'll talk about it when I get home tomorrow. I don't think you heard what I said. You are not going anywhere. Hey, Blanche, I'm 20 years old. I'm going wherever I please. Ma! <laughs> Will you stop telling her what to play? I'm not saying a word. Did I speak, Blanche? Not a word. You keep shaking your head. I've been holding it up for 80 years. You'd shake, too. <laughs> well, what do you think? Oh, no, I want to do cockwheels for six miles. <laughs> Get your keys, let's roll. Here are Mrs. Nyland's things. Oh, darling, put them right here. Thank you. I can't believe she's giving away this teddy bear. I wish I could afford to buy him at the sale. You like him? I think he's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, then I'm going to get... <laughs> I'm beginning to like her. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun together. Oh, Dorothy, nobody can replace you. Oh, Dorothy, I can't believe it. You're going to walk down that island, and you won't be home tonight. Oh, I'm going to miss you. And right now, I want to take them. <laughs> Rose, you can't stop taking these pills. You have a problem. I can stop, and I'll start stopping tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, boy, will you be... Am I alone here? 
<laughs> well, uh, why don't we go out to the lanai? <laughs> Wait a minute. Didn't you forget something? Oh, yes, of course. Goodbye, Mother. <laughs> what? What goodbye? You invited me to lunch. Rain check, rain check. Hi. <laughs> yes. You, sir, are a dirtbag. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It must be the heat. <laughs> What are you two doing? Can't you see Patrick is in the middle of an exquisite performance? You have no idea just how many performances he has been... I always assumed that he and Mama had a wonderful sex life. I walked in on him once when I was a little girl. There was all this huffing and puffing and high-pitched sounds, and then suddenly Big Daddy shouted, Glory! And they both lit up cigarettes. I bowed then and there. I... Lance, Rose... This is my little brother, Ted. Charmed, I'm sure. Oh, there's my new vanity fire. <laughs> he uh, just flew in from Minneapolis. Minneapolis, Minnesota? No, Rose, Minneapolis, France. <laughs> oh, I'm from Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota, too. Then you just moved to France? <laughs> Good, then hear this. May you lose the three hairs left on your head. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, may you lose your tweezers so your eyebrows meet to cover the wart in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> not a wart, that's a beauty mark. On Sophia Loren, it's a beauty mark. On you and Khrushchev, it's a wart. <laughs> I feel so, so undesirable. Oh, honey, we all have at some point. I know, Blanche, not you. <laughs> now, I remember when Stanley and I were going through this. We tried everything, relaxation techniques, hypnosis. I fed the man so many oysters when he packed... Get back in the social scene. <laughs> And it isn't easy. There are just so many jerks out there. You don't have to worry about me. I'm so normal, I'm dull. <laughs> oh, you're not dull. I mean, compared to not dating at all. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, maybe I shouldn't say this because someday I hope... <laughs> I'm trying to get comfortable. <laughs> Not me. You get too comfortable, you don't wake up. <laughs> Good night, Ma. Good night. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ma, I can't let him. Hey, I let you have the Donatello triplets. A deal is a deal. Sophia Alfonso will only embarrass himself. Oh, please, if he was worried about being embarrassed, he wouldn't walk around with that much hair in his ears. <laughs> Besides, he called his old vaudeville little partner, and they perfected one of their old tricks. I mean, who doesn't have a date? Rose, I need to borrow a silk scarf tonight. <laughs> you have a date? No, I'm doing the dance of the seven veils, and I'm one short. <laughs> Sometimes I worry about her. <laughs> Oh, that's how my mother taught me. <laughs> Honey, didn't that give you a false impression about what a man would look like? It sure did. <laughs> Can you imagine my surprise on my wedding night oh. with Charlie? <laughs> Boy, the Mars class was all filled up. Well, we'll see you soon. And Dorothy, uh, thanks for all your help. Maybe we can get together sooner. You can tell me all about that St. Olaf. <laughs> Sounds like a good place to raise a daughter. It's on the phone. The real phone, Rose, or your farmer in the Dale phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, I haven't had a farmer in the Dale phone since I was 50. Now, who called, Rose? Jerry Kennedy. Jerry Kennedy, the newscaster? Uh-huh. He's coming over to pick up his daily planner. I took it home from work by mistake. <laughs> Laszlo, we came over for you to decide once and for all which one of us you want for your statue. Rose. I knew it! It's me! Walk, suckers! He wants me! Rose, he just wanted to say something to you. I wanted to say that I would rather not decide at all. Oh, but Lazo, you've got to. It's the only. In the meantime, I'll bunk with you. I told Pepe he could have my room. He's staying here with us? Hey, we're in training. And set another place at the table. Hey, Pepe. Pepe, you like ravioli? Okay. Bungo. Kill Gonzalez. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, now, come on, Blanche. This is ridiculous. You can't stay here all night. You're going to have to eat sometime. Oh, this is where you don't know me, Dorothy. I can go for days without food if that's what it takes. Oh, come on, Blanche. You've been known to... <laughs> well, I'm here with my crew to get started. Sid, there's been a change of plan. We can't afford that new roof anymore. Well, I don't get it. You can't afford a new roof, but you can afford a painting like that? That's a DeKimmel, isn't it? Yeah, that repulsive trash is an original DeKimmel. And I have always wanted an original DeKimmel. Well, we'll see. Honey, the pageant is just a few days away. You can go to that circus any old time. How many years can you enter the Little Miss contest? Evidently, 23. <laughs> At least my mother voted for me. <laughs> the work. <laughs> hey. Hey, why are you wearing makeup? So your mother won't be embarrassed? <laughs> Honey, he won't pay any attention to you no matter what you do. Oh, yeah? Town. Where is he taking you? I'm not allowed to say security reasons. Well, none of this is true. Okay, I'll tell you. It's Julio Iglesias. You satisfied? We'll make the reservation for four. She'll tell us the truth when she gets here. I'm going to make this up to you. I said, just forget it, Ruth. No, I've already decided. For one week, I am going to be your personal Wiedenfrugen. <laughs> Can one woman do that for another? <laughs> Only if they're the same height. <laughs> what the hell is a weeding fruit? People usually are in this situation, Rose. Unless they're all dressed up in costumes. <laughs> Sorry. What's all the commotion? Oh, boy. Grandma, this isn't what it looks like. Please, I'm 80 years old. I may not remember what... felt like dressing up. Rose, well, about the movies. Would you mind if we didn't go? Well, no. What do you feel like doing? Why don't we just do what we did last night? We didn't do anything last night. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Al, we have to talk. Can't it wait till after moonlighting? There's a special episode on tonight. <laughs>